to the CE in New York in 2020 run from around the world. I want to get on a plane. Let me go on a plane. Welcome to Yvonne Meets Food, where I share my passion for making food, eating food, as well as traveling the world to discover and eat even more delicious food. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my favorite, favorite places that I found out about in 2020 that you absolutely need to visit in 2021 here in New York City. In the last six months of 2020, we were able to visit a lot of different neighborhoods and a lot of different restaurants, ranging from hole in the walls, places that were off the beaten track, places that were quite a far trek from the subway, but they were all definitely worth it because they had amazing food, super friendly service, and also are owned by small business owners who are really just trying to get by. We'll be breaking up the recommendations into four parts by borough, beginning with Brooklyn, that's this episode, moving on to Queens, my original borough I lived in when I first moved to New York City, up to the Bronx, and finally, finishing in Manhattan, my new home away from home. Now, let's get started. In Brooklyn, we're gonna start in Bedford-Stuyvesant, also known as Bed-Stuy. One of the biggest highlights we visited was a spot called Saragina, which is a one-part Italian restaurant, one-part Italian bakery. It is super, super delicious. They make some of my absolute favorite pizzas here in New York City. They are Neapolitan style, and the crust is just super airy, a little bit crispy, and the toppings range by season. When we visited, we had this lovely squash pizza that had this amazing cheese that just melted in your mouth. It was super yummy. And then on the other side, on the corner of the restaurant, they also have a bakery which has handmade pastas, lots of different pastries and breads. We picked up a loaf of bread there that was just to die for. I honestly can't stop thinking about that pizza. It was just so charred and so light and so fluffy. You wouldn't even realize you would eaten that much pizza until you actually looked down at your plate and were like, oh my God, I ate that much carbs? <laughs> Another spot that I really loved that when we visited Bed-Stuy was A&A Bake and Doubles. It's yummy Trinidadian Caribbean spot. It's kind of small. It's locally owned by a couple that has been in the area for I think the last two decades. They specialize in incredible Trinidadian style roti, which is super flaky, really soft, very moist. And also this specialty called doubles, which is basically like a little fluffy bao bun that is stuffed with curry chickpeas. And it's super addictive. Not only that, but the staff is super friendly and it's so, so cheap to eat. You could probably get a roti for only about three or four dollars. And it's huge. And I found out I'm clearly a big roti and doubles fan because we also found another spot that we liked in Bedside called Ali's Roti Shop. They also have amazing roti and doubles as well as many different curries and stews that are on offer. And they have no written menu. So when you're there, you just have to kind of point and tell them what you want. But no matter what you choose, you definitely will not go wrong. It's super yummy, pretty filling and relatively cheap. Next, we're moving on to Carroll Gardens, still in Brooklyn. A spot that I absolutely cannot not go to when I'm in the area is Malai Ice Cream. It's one of my favorite ice cream spots in the city, and they are super yummy because they actually specialize in Indian fusion ice creams. One of my favorite pumpkin ice creams was actually made there, and it was just really nice, lightly spiced, with just a hint of like Indian spice flavor that I really, really loved and my favorite rose ice cream. And I know if you're thinking, oh my gosh, like rose and ice cream, like I don't want to eat flowers in my ice cream, but they make a really, really delicious rendition of rose ice cream that has cinnamon roasted almonds in it. And it's just so, so complimentary, all of those delicious flavors. And as an added bonus, it is owned by a super innovative Indian female entrepreneur. 
We're always launching new flavors that are super delicious, super creative, and one of the latest flavors that are launching that you can order by the pint or come in for a scoop is actually named after our new vice president. It's called Madam Vice President, and I'm definitely going over there soon to check it out. Another spot we discovered during the pandemic in Carroll Gardens is a pizza spot called Bucali. Now, Lucali has definitely gotten quite a bit of media attention. They have lines that go for two to four hours that were pre-pandemic. And during the pandemic, we actually stopped by and got a pizza to go and literally ate it on the school grounds of a nearby public school in the area. It is not a cheap pizza. It's probably the most expensive pizza we've ever eaten but the price is definitely worth it when you taste the quality of not just the pizza crust itself, but the cheese, the tomato sauce, the entire combination of flavors is just, oh my God. It's my favorite, favorite pizza likely in all of New York City. And the owner is super friendly and really nice too. And one silver lining of the pandemic, if there is a silver lining, for COVID-19 is that we only had to wait for a pizza for 30 minutes. And that was the time that was needed to make it. Which one do you think looks better? The cup or the shirt? Hmm, I'm talking a lot. You like my mug? You like my mug? Give this video a thumbs up. If you like my shirt, make sure to subscribe. Moving over a little bit to the east of Carroll Gardens, we're now in Prospect Heights in Brooklyn. And our favorite spot there is this little spot called Look by Plant Love House. This is a Thai restaurant that actually was originally in Elmhurst, Queens, my original neighborhood when I moved to New York City. And they have really delicious, authentic Thai dishes that are super spicy and super authentic. Our favorite dish that we had there was a cow soy which is a dish that is quite ubiquitous if you visit Chiang Mai in Thailand. It's basically a curry noodle soup that has egg noodles, it's a little bit spicy, there's usually chicken in it, and their rendition is super delicious and is probably the closest thing that I've had to the cow soy that we had in Chiang Mai years ago. Another spot we loved in Prospect Heights was Rangoon. Rangoon is a Burmese restaurant in a city New York City that doesn't have that many Burmese restaurants, unfortunately, so this is certainly a gem. Their tea leaf salad is just so, so good. It's hard to describe what it tastes like, but it's kind of like a big mixture of sweet, salty, sour, a little bit bitter because of the tea leaves, but bitter in a good way. They also have really delicious cocktails on offer. They also have a great outdoor garden that you can sit at. So that'll definitely keep you safe during the pandemic. And also in Prospect Heights, we discovered a delicious pie spot that I'd actually been following quite a bit on Instagram. I was super excited to finally try. And that spot is called 4 and 20 Blackbirds Pie Counter and Bar. We had one slice of super memorable pie and that was the matcha custard pie. Had the super flaky crust super custardy custard that was a little bit eggy but not too sweet and this very very rich matcha flavor that was just singing oh, that combination of that silky custard with that super flaky pie crust was just incredible now we're heading to the northern part of brooklyn to greenpoint this is a spot that I've been wanting to try for a long time. I'd already been following them quite a long time on Instagram. So I was so excited that they had very ample outdoor seating during the pandemic and the service was all contactless. This spot is called D&D, &D, which is a Vietnamese restaurant that is a bit of a modern take on Vietnamese food, but the flavors are certainly authentic and super, super delicious. Some of the things that we had when we were there included the bun mi that had a delicious crispy pork belly filling and also a shrimp and mango salad that was just very, very fresh and very, very summery. We loved the food there. It was just so fresh. The bun mi was really crisp, had really crispy pork belly and that salad was just super memorable. In fact, I would want to go back to try the barbecue, the bun sale, probably everything on the menu because everything looked so good. And even the food presentation during the pandemic was really, really beautiful. 
And on the same day that we visited D&D, we also visited Polly G's Slice Shop in Greenpoint. So Polly G's has a regular sit-down restaurant, but they also, they also opened a slice shop because of how popular they are. They actually haven't been around for super long. I think they've only been around for 10 years, but they quickly gained a reputation of being one of the best pizzas in all of New York City. We got two slices, we got a regular triangle slice, and we also had an upside down Sicilian that they call the Freddie Prince. It has fresh mozzarella, incredible tomato sauce, pecorino romano, with the most incredibly toasty sesame seeds on the bottom. It was so, so addictive. Ugh. The doughiness and the crispness were just beautiful together. Okay, so now we're traveling all the way south to the bottom of Brooklyn to a really fun and eclectic neighborhood called Bensonhurst. And so in Bensonhurst, one of my favorite spots we visited was most definitely Queen Anne Ravioli. They have been around for over 40 years and have been owned by three generations of the same family. And they are super famous for, ta-da, ravioli. They make all types of different house-made pastas. But their most favorite, or their most popular ravioli is most definitely their three cheese ravioli. I actually was lucky enough to meet the owner and he was super friendly and chatted me up while I admired their Christmas train set in front of their windows during Christmas time. Another one of the favorite spots that we found out about during the pandemic in Bensonhurst was Il Fornaretto Bakery. They have been around for a long time. They have very friendly service. Their store is small, but quaint and very warm and friendly. And when we were there, we'd eaten quite a bit. So I didn't want to buy too much. So I just decided to get a small piece of bread. We got the panini bread. And because we were full, we saved it to the next day. I toasted it and it was just so, so good. It was really crispy on the outside, airy and fluffy on the inside, and it really made me regret not buying more bread from there. A number of the other things that are very popular on their menu that they tend to sell out very early of are the semolina bread, the focaccia, the prosciutto bread. Oftentimes, if you go there on the weekends, early in the morning, there will be long, long lines of locals, even people that have traveled all the way from Long Island and New Jersey, just to have the infamous Il Fornaretto bakery bread. Another spot we love that is also Italian in Bensonhurst was Villa Batte Alba, which is a bakery that has all kinds of delicious pastries, cakes, all kinds of delicious things with, made with imported ingredients from Italy. When we were there, we had incredibly delicious cannoli. The cannoli shell was super crisp, light and airy, was just lightly sweetened ricotta that was actually imported from Sicily. They had signs everywhere on the inside that said it was imported from Sicily. There are no cameras allowed inside, but just to give you a sense of what it looks like, they have these really lovely murals inside, they have ceiling, ceiling paintings, and it's very, very homely with lots of decoration and even stained glass. Service is very fast, and you'll definitely be in and out very quickly. The ice cream there was also good too. We had the pistachio, and I'm a huge pistachio everything fan, and it definitely did not disappoint. And lastly, in Bensonhurst, the last spot that we found out about during the pandemic was Mama's Noodle House. They are run by a husband and wife team that are originally from Guangdong or Canton in China, and they took over the space from another Chinese restaurant owner. They decided to do Sichuanese food as kind of their main type of Chinese food because they said that because it was more trendy, it would probably end up being more successful. And it sounds like they have been quite successful. They have been written up in a number of publications, including in the New York Times. And when we were there, we had these small wontons in chili oil, and they were super delicious. They were very plump very much filled with lots of filling and they even come with this really nice sauce that has little bits of ground pork in it. So it's definitely a very generous serving. All the dumplings are handmade by the wife who takes great pride in her wontons. I actually had a nice chat with her and wontons are probably her favorite thing to make. So if they are her favorite thing to make, I'm pretty certain that they are definitely going to be good here and that you will like it if you try it. We're actually ending in Bay Ridge, a little bit to the west. 
And so this spot is very, very special. It has beautiful artwork. It is, it is owned by a husband and wife team who are super, super sweet. And it's called Ayat NYC. So Ayat NYC is a Palestinian restaurant, which may seem a little bit, huh, wow, there's actually Palestinian restaurants in New York. Well, this is probably the first one I've heard of. So they have lots of delicious small plates and meat on spits, lots of combination plates that look really, really tantalizing. But when we were there, we got their labne, their eggplant, um, super fresh and flaky flatbreads that they call saj, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And they also have really beautiful murals with lots of thought-provoking messages around politics inside as well as out. They also have indoor seating when indoor seating opens up again, also a decent amount of outdoor seating. One thing that we didn't get to have when we were there but looked really, really good was a delicious Arabic coffee and teas. Those are specially made and fired to order. Last spot in Brooklyn is actually in Red Hook and that is going to be Barrow's Tasting Room. And so you're probably wondering, what is this bottle that I'm holding right now? So this is actually Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. So Barrow's Tasting Room has lots of different cocktails and drinks that you can get with their homemade ginger liqueur. And we actually found out about this spot years ago when we were participating in Open House New York which is basically a weekend, usually in October here in New York City, where you can actually tour different interesting buildings or apartments that are architecturally very unique. And so these guys that had opened up their Tribeca apartment, they also, they not only were generous enough to open their apartment during Open House New York to random people like us, but they also allowed us to taste their Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur that they make. And so they've since expanded. They now have this great tasting room in Sunset Park. And so we were able to try a, a cocktail with the ginger liqueur, as well as a very interesting and unique coffee drink that was made mixed with this ginger liqueur. And I normally would not imagine ginger would be something I'd want to mix with coffee, but it actually was very, very complimentary and was very, very tasty and memorable. Another cool thing about visiting Barrow's Tasting Room in Sunset Park slash Red Hook is that it's actually in a space called Industry City, which is basically a repurposed warehouse where there are lots of really cool, new, innovative food spots you can check out. So there's also Japanese spots that are there, a Japanese supermarket that you can peruse, and lots of different desserts as well. So that wraps up my favorite places that I discovered in 2020 that you absolutely have to check out here in New York City in 2021. There's so many delicious, amazing small businesses that really need your support. And as an added bonus, you get to eat super yummy food. And while you're here, don't forget to check out my video about New York City food and culture during the pandemic that's also available on my channel. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoy this video and we'll take some of my recommendations on where to eat here in New York City. If you end up checking out any of these places, let me know what your favorite dish was. If you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I would love to hear what your favorite cuisine is and where you had it. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get immediate notifications as soon as I upload my next video. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time. Leave yummy! I'm not ready. No. Leave it!